I was born here in Israel. Because my mother was Moroccan and my dad was Scottish, we ended up moving to England. That's where my mom wanted us to really focus in on what it meant to be Jewish. For her, it meant loving the state of Israel. It meant celebrating the Sabbath from time to time. Traditional Judaism. As I got older, I began to question whether that traditional Judaism actually made sense to go off and find books for myself. Now, most people have asked me, okay, so why didn't you just go straight to the Bible, you know, to the Tanakh, yeah. to the Old Testament? And the reality is that I've kind of seen so much. My mom and dad made us watch so much. And at Passover, she made us watch the Ten Commandments, that yeah. old three and a half hour movie. And because I'd watched that, I thought to myself, well, why read the book if I've already seen the movie? Forget that. <laughs> I'm going to go and focus in on other stuff. So I went and got myself a copy of the Quran, and I got, got myself a copy of the Bhagavad Gita which is part of Hindu writings, mm -hmm. and I began to read through those two books. I'm about 18 years old at this point, and I've been reading through these two books, and I still haven't found out who God is. And so I decided, at 18 years old, I was actually sitting in my bedroom with the Quran, and the thought, I had this thought, I was like, well, if God's real, I don't need to read through all these books, because if He's real, He should be able to just, you know, show up. So there in my room, I took the Quran, I put it down next to me, and I said, God, if you're real, show up. I was expecting, nothing to happen at all. Yeah. But at the end of my bed appears to me the face, the face of Jesus. So I see this face and inside myself, I think, oh my goodness, that's Jesus. I start freaking out. I think this couldn't possibly be. Wait, wait, you're, you weren't looking for him. No, no, no. You weren't being told about him. No. That you could maybe see him. Nope. But you knew it was him. I knew it was him. And I was just like, how can this possibly be true? Wow. How can this be real? And I'll admit that at the time I may have been, you know, involved with certain substances like it's the drugs it's something it couldn't possibly be real so i decided that it's all rubbish i've just hallucinated something yeah. it, and so i put it away and i decided to never tell anyone about it now i leave england at that point after i meet when i finish high school and i move to israel so i go to learn modern hebrew um, and there in my classroom is the most beautiful girl adele my wife I met her at my Hebrew class. As we were falling in love, we start talking about God as well, because she comes from a family that was very new age talking. And eventually we get to the point where we realize all we do is talk. Okay. But we never actually change anything. Let's do something with our faith in God. And being Jewish and living here in Israel, we decide let's try Judaism. We kind of have to discover it as we go. So I'm we do Shabbat, we try kosher, we try festivals, and then I realize you don't go to synagogue once a week, you go to synagogue three times a day. So I start going to synagogue, and eventually we become religious, so religious that living in the beautiful city of Tel Aviv becomes a little too much for us, yeah. and we move to Jerusalem. That's when I end up going to the army. In the army, I serve in the head rabbinical court. So like the chaplains in America yeah. or in other places, Israel has rabbis, and so we have a rabbinical court. We go home one day, and Adele has invited this lady, her name's Judy, to come round for tea. So I'm sitting there with Judy. She tells us something that I didn't expect her to say. She says, you're well, Adele, have you ever read the Tanakh for yourselves? Now, we're Orthodox Jews. Okay. I've never had somebody ask me if I've read the Bible. And in fact, a lot of people who aren't Jewish will probably look at us and think to us, think to themselves, well, of course they've read the Bible, they're Orthodox Jews. But the reality is we've never had. We've never just sat down and read through the Bible for ourselves. So we took on the challenge and decided to have a race. Right? Who's going to read through the Bible first? Start racing through. And first thing we discover is there's a difference between the Judaism that we were used to and, and the, Juda the Judaism that we were living and the Jewishness of the actual Bible. It just seems different. We start to read through um, more and more and more. And eventually I get to, drum roll, Isaiah, Isaiah 53. 53. Now, for me, that chapter was just sort of like, it was just annoying. Like I'd read through a lot of stuff. Yeah. I'd read through a lot of Isaiah, didn't understand anything, but that chapter bothered me. So I went off to Judy to get an explanation. Now Judy is actually a Jewish believer in Jesus, but had never told me of You didn't know it? No. Wow. So I go to her house and I ask her, what's Isaiah 53? And she's been praying that God would tell her when to tell us about Jesus. So <laughs> he told you instead of her. Right. Directly. So I knock on that door and say, explain Isaiah 53. And for her, it's the sign she's been waiting for. So she brings me in, sits me down, and starts to tell me about Jesus. 
Now I'm sitting there going, oi vey, you know, I can't possibly believe this, yeah. because while my connection to Judaism has changed, uh, my connection to my identity hasn't. Right. And Jesus and Jewish, no. Right. But as she's speaking, I realize, oh, well, I ask myself, why am I saying no? Because I've read through the Quran, I've read through the Gita, I've lived an Orthodox life, I've lived a secular life. Like, why am I saying no specifically to this? So there in that room, a little frustrated and fighting with myself, I turned to God and I said, okay, I'm sick and tired of this. Just show me the truth. And the moment that I prayed that prayer, I had that same picture of the face of Jesus appearing yeah. before me wow. as it had when I was 18. And I knew that I knew that I knew that Jesus was real. I now need to go and tell my beautiful wife yeah. that he's the Messiah. I walk into the house and this was my plan. I burst into the bedroom where Adele was sitting reading and I said, sweetheart, something terrible has happened. Jesus is the Messiah. She looks up to me, and I think she's going to scream, shout, something. She looks up to me and she goes, oh, okay. And I was like, what do you mean, okay? Like, I wanted like a reaction, something. But she was just like, look, calm down, we'll get a book. You know, and I'm, I, I wanted to have this whole conversation with her. She didn't want to like get into it. So I decided, okay, I'm going to go get a book. She starts reading. So about a week later, I come home from the base and there is Adele sitting in our living room having just finished the book of Matthew. And she has tears in her eyes. So I go in and I say, sweetheart, what's wrong? Why are you crying, right? She's in tears. And she looks up to me and says something that I'll never forget. She said, he was such a good man. Why has no one ever told us this story before? So I realized that there we were in Jerusalem where Jesus walked and talked and lived and died and rose from, but we lived there and no one had heard the story. At that moment, I kind of freaked out and I realized I've got to tell people, That's right? Because and this is the key, it's not a, it's not a philosophy. Yeah. It's not just a cool thing to be part of. Jesus is actually real, mm -hmm. and that actually makes a difference to everything.